My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with a Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. This is episode number 20 of the 120 Days to Jam Economics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be taking a look at the types of demand. In the previous episode, we took a look at changes in demand, changes in demand, and changes in quantity demanded. Now, the various types of demand are competitive demand, joint slash complementary demand, derived demand or circuitous demand, and composite demand, or you can say composite demand. Now, competitive demand is the demand for close substitutes, related products. In English, substitute means replacement that can be easily replaced. Look at it. Look at Bon Vita. Bon Vita and Milo. Bon Vita, they are not misbehave, and Milo, they are not misbehave. Do you know why? What Bon Vita can do, Milo can do it. Cow bear and picnic. What cow bear can do, picnic can do it. So, if this Milo company tries to misbehave or increase price, what will happen? Many persons will move to the substitutes. That is competitive demand. Now, if you watch football, take a look at the situation where you have Ronaldo and Messi in the same club. Ronaldo and Messi in the same club. And one can only play since, let's say they can play the same position in attack, and one of them can only play. The coach starts Ronaldo and benches Messi. You can only start one and bench one. If in the process of the match, after 10 minutes, Ronaldo scores a goal, another 15 minutes, 20 minutes, he scores another goal, what happens? Ronaldo will keep playing. The coach will not want to substitute Messi. Will not want to substitute Ronaldo. But a situation where the match just begins, Ronaldo misses a lot of chance, misses penalty, then, second half, he's not playing well. What happens? Messi will be substituted. That's the same thing as competitive demand. There are two products that are replacement of each other. So you can choose from one to the other, depending on the behavior of one. Now, since they are close substitutes, any competitive products that you have around, if the price of one increases, there will be shift in demand. Demand will shift. So, for competitive demand, two things should be ringing in your head. Changes. Price. Price will lead to shift in demand. If we have something like this, like this, this is the first price, P1. The price increases to P2. So this arrow shows increase in price. If here we are 100 Naira, so here is something above 100 Naira, let's say 200 Naira. And by the law of demand or in normal demand curve, as price increases, quantity is supposed to decrease. So here is second quantity, here is the first quantity. There will be a decrease in quantity. So, which means when price was P1, quantity was here. Price goes to P2, quantity drops like this. So, we have something like this. As price drops further, if you keep shifting this way, so this arrow goes up to show that it is moving this way or upward. 
some cases, some persons choose to do something like this, they are the same thing. So this is demand curve for increase in price. Now let's call this bon vita. If this is bon vita and there is increase in price here, this increase in price of bon vita will lead to change in demand. So let's call bon vita B and let's call Milo M. This is what will happen. An increase in price of bon vita leads to shift in demand for Milo. Now, this shift in demand is favorable because since the price of Bovita has increased, people will shift to Milo. So Milo will get a positive shift in demand or an increase in demand. So from quantity demanded earlier to a higher quantity, demand has shifted to the right or outward to show increase. Now, a situation where for Bovita, there is decrease in price as you can see this drop price from p1 to p2 as price drops you see quantity increases from q1 to q2 and you see that the curve slopes downward from right to left as you can see here what happens this will not favor milo since this one is becoming more favorable there will be a shift in demand in milo but in this case this shift is leftward or inward which shows decrease in demand so, an increase in price of Bonvita will lead to shift in demand in Milo, but in this case, increase in demand. A drop in price of Bonvita will lead to shift in demand in Milo. This time around, decrease in demand. So, as this arrow is going this way, this way and this way, the other one will be coming back. As this is coming back, this one will be going forward. Join demand. Is the demand for two commodities that satisfy a particular want. Let's see stove and kerosene. Stove and kerosene. Now, stove needs kerosene for cooking. What do you think will happen if the price of stove goes up? If the price for stove goes up, the demand for stove will reduce. People will be buying stove less. And what happens to kerosene? The demand for kerosene will reduce. So as the price of one goes or go up, the demand for the second one will reduce. Let's look at it. These days, you remember then when everyone, when we are using stove, we are buying kerosene up and down for stove. These days, people prefer to use gas. Now, since we started using gas, the demand for stove dropped drastically. Demand for stove dropped drastically. Immediately after that, the demand for kerosene for cooking reduced drastically. That is complementary joints or complementary demand. Now, take a look at it in competitive way. Gas and kerosene stove, they were comp competing. Since gas got more favorable, the demand for gas increased and the demand for stove died. That is competitive demand. Stove and gas, they are substitutes. So if tomorrow gas gets so expensive, we can't afford gas, we can't afford cylinder, and the price of kerosene gets so low, all of us will go back to stove. With that, you see that competitive demand makes a lot of sense now. But we are talking about joint demand. For joint demand, this is what we do for competitive demand. But look at it. For joint demand, if here is stove, here is stove, you see that for stove, the price has increased. As the price increased, the demand for stove will drop. The demand for kerosene will drop. Here is kerosene. Kerosene. So, an increase in price of stove will lead to shift in demand for kerosene. For kerosene, here won't increase, it will reduce. Backward means reduction. So here is second quantity, here is first quantity. The new quantity, the quantity has dropped. The first quantity is bigger than the second quantity. Then demand will move from D1, D1 to D2. 
because D1 is now greater than D2. This is what happens. Now, stay on complementary demand or joint demand. If this is two, so this shows a reduction in the price of stove. The price of stove has reduced. What happens? The quantity of kerosene bought will be going up. So, let's go here. Kerosene. So, instead of coming down, it will be going up. So, here turns to Q1, Q2, it goes up. Here becomes D1, here becomes D1, and here becomes D2. And the arrow goes forward. If you notice something, the graphs for competitive demand and joint demand are opposite. Here and here are the same. For competitive, here they go forward as this increases. But here they come back. So take note of all that. Derived demand is a demand for goods or commodities, not for direct consumption, but for further production. For example, lab uh, labor, which are factors of production. So the demand for factors of production is under derived demand or circuitous demand. Why composite demands are demand for goods that serve more than one purpose. For example, demand for corn, for animal feed, for ethanol, for food. It can be used for so many things. Or the demand for steel to make car parts, utensils, and so many other products. That is a composite demand. And we have direct demand. Demand for something you eat immediately, directly. Yes, that also follows. Ladies and gentlemen, to whom much is given, should not run away with it. With this, we come to the end of types of demand. I trust you found something helpful. And if you do, that will be a nice one. In the next episode, we shall be looking at elasticity of demand. Before then, how about you install the Flash Learner Jam app? Activate, open the app, go to economics. On that year, choose random. On that topic, choose types of demand. Only questions on that demand will pop up. Then you start practicing playing with questions before we get to the question and answers session. See you.